technology will be instrumental in the future of maritime uh, merchant shipping. Uh, the reason is that there's a carbon intensity factor that LNG will presumably reduce by 20 to 25 percent depending on how it is measured. Uh, it reduces particulate matter 100 percent and also has sulfur um, and, and other ancillary benefits. The main concern with LNG is of course the methane slip factor, although energy manufacturers have done a lot of work recently to abate any of those concerns. However, it is still a material problem for the future. The concern with LNG as a transitory fuel to a zero carbon future is one principally of capital constraints. We are not seeing green bonds robustly offered in the market uh, only to the most investment grade of counterparties. Uh, the higher capital expenditure of 10 to 20 million dollars on an LNG fueled engine is prohibitive for many ship owners. Unless there's a long-term lease or some sort of government subsidy, we don't see it as a, as a solution generally for the market. The concern with regards to the end user's carbon abatement is, is principally founded in where will that be in the jurisdictional compliance. So for example, cargoes going into Europe have a direct priceability of carbon. In the United States, we don't have anything in that capacity. We also don't keep track of carbon emissions on ships directly. Right now, in order to fund the acquisition of an LNG-fueled carrier, generally, you would need somewhere to the effect of 20 to 25% roughly in increased day rates. That's not necessarily able to be passed through to the end user. Of course, in some, in some asset classes, such as container ships, there's the pricing ability. Um, this is a competition question in that capacity. But in the more bulk merchant vessel classes, such as tankers, uh, LPG, gas carriers, and, and dry bulk, there's less price, price pass-through ability. Right now, we see a very long-term future for gas as the alternative fuel, and principally because there's price discovery on LNG, LPG, and these type of mechanisms. Unfortunately, for the alternative fuels such as methanol, ammonia, uh, and other very bespoke products, we don't see the same long-term price discovery. It's not listed on futures exchanges or at least not robustly traded. This is a concern because without price discovery long-term, you, you have a difficult time substantively reducing your cost basis. Now, if there is a carbon market, such as there is in, in Europe, you can potentially offset some of these inflationary cost pressure. However, in the United States, we don't currently have an obligatory carbon trading market. So unfortunately, if you're trading a United States service, there's no benefit directly with uh, an LNG fuel chip. Unfortunately, right now, due to the volatility of gas price generally in, in the world, uh, there's a concern with regards to the economic viability of LNG as a fuel. First, the infrastructure is not built. Second, the engines are higher in terms of capital expenditure. Uh, and finally, the gas price itself uh, is relatively higher, even offsetting for carbon, uh, carbon abatement technologies. Unfortunately, we're just not certain what the future of gas price will hold, except that it's going to be volatile. In a volatile market where you don't have good visibility into your marginal cost functions, this becomes an impediment to investment. A more volatile capital market generally will have lower security of investment.